Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together, and this is part four of designing a beautiful inventory. The finished product looks like this with a lot of features, but specifically today we're going to be taking a look at this whole function right here of adding an item from an array to a DS list. You can download the finished product in the comments below or pause the screen right here and just copy this code. I'm going to go ahead and go on and explain exactly how I do this and why I chose what I did so you can implement it into your own game. Stay tuned to the end for details about the giveaway of my beginner course on all of my Game Maker tutorials. So I'm going to create a script, right click create a script and I'm using 2.3, so a script here is actually a container for functions. But if you're not on 2.3, that's okay. Just name this script the function that you want to use. I'm going to name this inventory because I'm going to put all of my functions inside of here. And for right now, I'm going to rename this specific function, add item to master list. And I'm going to put a description inside of here, add an item to master list. Now that's kind of redundant, but at the same time, it's always a good idea to get into the habit of using descriptions and parameters, which is what I'm going to add next. So the parameters here are actually going to be attributes. This is the array of attributes to add. And in 2.3, the function works like every other function in pretty much every other language. So we can actually just type in attributes and that is what we can access. If you're not on 2.3, you just say var attributes equals argument zero, and then we're off doing the exact same thing after that. So I wanna show you some safe coding practices, but before I do that, I'll just go ahead and show you exactly how we're going to add this to the DS grid. So if that's what you're here for, you can do it. The first thing we do though, is look at the size of our grid. Right now I've created it at a size of zero because there are no items inside of it. The way that I'm going to be doing this is always adding one to whichever one we're at. So we have to resize our grid so that it goes up correctly every time we add an item. And the function we use for that is DS grid resize. So we're gonna resize this and I am using my DS grid like this the X or the width of it is the items. So I have, this is what it looks like, and the height are the actual properties that we're using. So when we resize a grid, we have to pass in the grid, which is gonna be global.allItems. We pass in the width, and this is the new width. So I'm gonna say DS grid width of global.allItems plus one. And then the width or the height of it is going to be DS grid height of what we currently have because we're not changing the actual height at all. Add two parentheses because it's all wrapped up inside of a function. And now we've resized our grid. Now we're going to actually add to it. So four of our i is equal to zero. i is less than array length. And if you're using not to, if you're not using 2.3, then you'll use array length 1D. We'll say attributes plus plus i. And now all we have to do is just map each of the attributes of the array, so each index of the array, to the index of our DS grid, which they should match up exactly because that's the way we have it designed. So I'm going to say global.allItems. And this is the DS grid. And we can actually access a DS grid directly as an array with the hashtag or the pound symbol. And now we're gonna always add the attributes to the item that we just resized for. So DS grid width global.allItems minus one. So when we made it, we created it with zero items. So it was, it was, it was not able to hold anything. Now, when we resize, we get how many items it can hold. Oh, it can hold zero, so let's add one to that. Now it can hold one item, and that one item starts in index zero. But when we call DS grid width now, after we've resized it, it's gonna give us a one, or a two, or a three, or however many items you have. So we have to go back one, because we just added that one, to make sure we're in the right spot. But you can't resize after, because you have to have that slot available. So it must be done in this order, just go back to the one you actually want it at. DS grid width returns starting counting at one, but arrays and DS grids start counting at zero. 
kind of annoying, but if you understand that that's how it works, then you can get around it. And the attribute that we're changing for this item is just I, because that's what's moving up all the time. So close that bracket and just set it equal to attributes I. Are you ready to start making the game of your dreams? Then head on over to letslearnistogether.com to check out my trilogy of courses to take you from beginner to expert. Game development is hard and frustrating when you're going at it alone and you don't have anyone to turn to. Join me on the journey and I'll be with you every step of the way to alleviate all of that frustration. And by the end, you'll be ready to make any game you can set your mind to. Go ahead and get started now at letslearnistogether.com. And that will actually work. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint in here. I'm gonna open up our room and I'm gonna put the item that we're working on right now, which is OBJ items inside here. So we can actually watch this work as it goes. So I'll actually put it right here so we can see it get resized as well. So I'm gonna hit F6. Now in here, I'm gonna pull this up. Here's our global variable. I'm gonna right click on it and view it as a DS grid. That way we can actually see inside of it. So right now, if I try to expand it, there's nothing there. It has a width of zero, and that means that it has no items, like it can't hold anything, but it does have a height of six. If I press next, now we have one item in here with six empty slots. So let's go through and add those in. So the first time, you can see over here, here's our attributes, our local variable. Zero is small knife, so attributes, zero because that's what i is is small knife and we're going to place that here so i click next and it transmits it over you can keep going through and it keeps doing that for all of them and then when it's done well it's done so now we're all done and that's it that's how you add an array to a ds grid it's with a for loop and make sure you resize it beforehand unless you created your grid with the proper size now, this is actually adding the item, but what I want to also show you is being able to make sure that this functions exactly the way that you would expect it to. So if we comment this out, we forget to make it or anything like that, and then we run this, well, it's obviously going to crash because we don't have that variable. So I want this function to always work without crashing our game. Now, when I say work, I just mean it gets called, and if it works, then it proceeds properly. If not, then it's going to return gracefully and not crash our game. So the first thing we're gonna check is, does the global variable exist? So, if variable global exists. Hey, there's a function for that. Look at that. We have to type it in as a string, and we only type in the actual name of it, not the global portion. So we're gonna type that. If this is equal to false, what I'm actually gonna do is create it. So then global.allitems equals DS grid create zero and then item dot height. And that way, now if it doesn't exist, we make it. So Let's check again. Is the global variable a DS grid? Now we know that if it doesn't exist, we make it and so that it is. But what happens if somewhere else in your code, for some reason, you destroy it or you reassign it to something else? If that's the case and that happens somewhere along the line after you try to add an item to that, then you're gonna get an error and it will crash your game. So now we're gonna check to see if DS exists global dot all items and it's a type of grid and if it's not so it doesn't equal that then we're going to set it to be that so global dot all items equals DS grid create zero item dot height so now if it gets through here and it is a variable, but maybe it's something else entirely, we're gonna grab that and we're gonna recreate it to exactly what we need it to be. Now, this might actually cause more problems in your game than it's worth, so you could also comment these out and instead just show a message that's like, 
uh, no variable found called all items and then return. So you can try to fix it or you can just say, hey, something went terribly wrong here. The code that you wrote before you, you were supposed to write, something went wrong and then you just return. Return will take you out of the function and not do anything after it's called. So that's actually what I'm gonna do here, just to be on the safe side. No DS grid found. And the last one we wanna check is gonna be, are the attributes proper? So if what we pass in of the attributes isn't an array, then we've got a problem. And if we try to add it, then we're gonna fail because we'll try to access a variable attributes, which isn't an array. And we don't wanna do that. Or array length, and again, if you're not on 2.3, use array length 1D. If the attributes length doesn't equal item.height, then we're going to do the same thing. So we're gonna show a message and then return. So input for adding items isn't right. So we want to make sure that it is exactly the correct size there. Otherwise, there's a problem. So let's test that out. Let's add a 10 to the end here. And now that's the wrong number of attributes. So it doesn't work and it gets returned, but our game doesn't crash. And that's exactly what we wanted. So now we are able to add items to the master list in a safe way, making sure that it's always going to work properly. And if you wanted to, you could set up a system here where if you call this and none of these properties are correct, you could fix that and then you add it. So different ways of approaching the problem. I'm going to go with the approach that if it doesn't work, then you've typed something wrong in your code and you probably want to go back and fix that and be told right away that something went wrong. So that's what I'm going to do right here. And that's all I wanted to do in this video. In the next one, we're gonna take what the items that we've added and we're gonna add more in the next video as well, but we're gonna take all of that and start displaying it in a UI in the inventory that we're actually gonna have in our game. On every Game Maker tutorial and video I put out from here into the future, I'm gonna be giving away one copy of my beginner game developer course, a great way to go from no programming experience to be able to make your own games. To be entered to win, just like the video and leave a comment showing me your keyboard works. You can leave a comment about anything. A week after the video is posted, I will send you a message with the coupon. If you want, you can use it for yourself, give it to a friend, or apply it towards a more expensive course by just sending me an email and letting me know that's what you'd like to do. If you want to see more content from me, then subscribe and ring the bell to be notified every time I put out a new video. But that's all I've got for you. So thank you so much for joining me. And as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.